myself Rajeshwari RP, working as an assistant professor in the department of CSA RYMEC, pre, uh, feels privileged to be a part of e Sikshana program undertaken by VT, uh, e Learning Center Mysuru. As per the new scheme, uh, the digital design and computer organization, the subject code BCS302, uh, I will be handling the computer organization part. Contents I would be uh, dealing with the third module is uh, basic structure of the computers. Uh, in this, we have to study about the functional units, basic operational concepts, bus structure, performance, uh, performance measurement. In the second part of the module three, we need to concentrate on the machine instructions and program, uh, memory location and addresses, memory operations, instruction sequencing and addressing modes. So the main textbook we have to follow for the computer organization part is the Carl Hemmicher, uh, that is the fifth edition. So apart from this, the uh, e-content you can try to refer the notes uh, which is uploaded in the uh, e-learning center. So first of all, why we have to study this particular subject? So what is the need to um, study the computer organization and the computer architecture? So first of all, to be a complete system engineer, we have to have every details of the working of the instruction at the micro level, so that you, we can be a better, we can be able to uh, design better programs in an efficient manner. We can design better uh, application programs, whether it be compilers, system software, or any other uh, operating systems also. Right. So first we shall try to understand the definition of the computer architecture uh, followed by the computer organization. So are the two terms same or are they different? Yes. So the computer architecture and organization are two uh, concepts which are said to be interrelated. So the first, in when we speak about the computer architecture, it is the first step in the design process. So this computer architecture, it deals with how uh, the particular uh, design, how you are going to design the CPU, the memory, the bus, uh, and other uh, design concepts and desired requirement specification is all uh, taken up by the uh, computer architecture. So it also uh, refers to the designing of the uh, uh, ISA, called as the instruction set architecture. Um, okay. So next is the, the second level, we are having the computer organization. So this computer organization refers to the operational uh, units, operational units and their interconnections and that implement the architectural specifications. So basically to differentiate, so computer architecture tells how we have to, uh, what we can design. Okay, but the computer organization will tell how to implement a particular uh, concept, how to uh, implement the design specifications of the architecture. Okay, so knowing the, the definition of the computer architecture, we shall move further. And the first concept here we have to discuss is the fundamental uh, functional units of a computer. So this functional units of the computer is been uh, shown in the following block diagram. So we are having the input part, the output. So the input unit, the output unit, the memory followed by the processor. So in the processor we are having the all the arithmetic uh, and the logic unit and the control unit. Okay. So coming to the explanation of each of the functional block here. So first is the input unit. So all of you know that the basic uh, um, the input uh, unit is nothing but it is uh, it is going to accept the uh, input from the user from the electromechanical devices such as the keyboard uh, or the other type of devices, pointing devices like mouse and other type of input devices. And so this is going to store the information uh, whether in the memory for later usage. Okay. And then is the output unit. So this output unit is basically dealing with uh, producing the output of whatever is being processed. So it tries to bring the output to the outside world. So usually the output device is the um, monitor or the what we call the uh, monitor or the printer. Okay, these are the two uh, output devices what we know.
know fundamentally. So, the next uh, uh, unit is called as the memory functional uh, unit. In the functional uh, unit of the computer, we are having this particular memory unit here. So, this particular memory is a storage device, sorry, uh, it is a particular memory what we call it as a, it is a storage unit which is capable of storing uh, all the uh, information. Okay. So, basically in this diagram, we can uh, try to understand what is the uh, different types of memories what we are having. So, this particular memory. So, in the memory, uh, we are having uh, the primary memory, secondary memory and the cache memory. So, the memory can be differentiated in terms of primary and the secondary memory. So, this primary memory contains the RAM and the ROM. Okay. So, coming back to the slide. So, that is about the particular uh, memory. So, this particular memory basically it is of, uh, it can be primary or the secondary memory. As we move forward, we will try to know the uh, other details of the memory. So, next is the arithmetic and the logical unit and the uh, control unit. So, next we shall try to uh, understand each uh, um, uh, working of each uh, unit in detail. So, before that we shall try to understand the information handled by a computer. So, this what is the information that can be handled or processed by the computer. So, this particular computer is being able to handle uh, the machines uh, instructions or what we call the machine instructions or just uh, the instructions uh, and uh, the data. So, the instructions can be a data transfer instructions, the arithmetic and logical uh, instructions, any type of instructions uh, that is the, um, together forms that forms a program. So, next is the data. So, this can be the data represents the operands of the instructions and uh, it can be part uh, the operands uh, which is uh, forming a part of the source program. So, whatever the operands are there in the source program. So, this particular it can be in the form of encoded uh, binary code in the form of zeros or ones. So, the next as we have seen what is the now getting into the every details of the functional unit. So, a mechanism through which the computer is fed the input. So, that we have seen the input device, uh, the output uh, unit is nothing but the mechanism that conveys the uh, result uh, or the of a, a particular operation or the execution of an instruction. The result of a program is being sent to the outside world via what we call the display device. Okay. So, next we are having the memory as I have said. So, the memory uh, it is a storage unit. So, where uh, the information is being stored in the form of a uh, uh, bits. Okay. Group of 8 bits is going to form 1 byte. So, information uh, is um, handled in the form of a uh, bits or bytes um, in the form of group of bits. Okay. So, that um, basically we are having the memory, we are having primary memory, in the me primary memory we are having the RAM and the ROM and uh, in the secondary memory there are uh, various types of um, what we call it as the different types of hardware, uh, different types of memory devices and uh, um, apart from that primary, secondary we are having the cache. So, so, uh, coming to the memory unit. So, basically this particular memory is being used to store the programs and as uh, specified there are two types of memory, primary memory and the secondary memory. So, the primary memory as we uh, as we have seen there are two types of primary memory RAM and the ROM. So, the primary coming to the characteristics of the primary memory, the primary memory is fast and it is able to hold the data the compared to the capacity or the size the capacity of this particular main memory or the primary memory is smaller compared to that of the secondary memory but the speed of accessing is fast and it is capable of uh, uh, holding uh, uh, large uh, group of uh, bits in the form of a byte so, every the data is organized in the form of a memory location where every memory location is being identified by a symbolic name. So, every memory location is being given either an address 
address or a symbolic name it is identified by a symbolic name so this particular it is containing basically a storage units uh, we call it as a semiconductor storage cells so the in the primary memory it can, the ram either can be a, st a static ram or it can be the dynamic ram okay so next we are having the secondary storage unit it is said to be it is a capacity is larger but the uh, if we uh, take the time required to access this main memory it is larger uh, uh, sorry the secondary storage it is said to be larger when compared to the uh, primary memory so the for that reason we are going to use this particular uh, uh, primary memory to hold the data and the programs during the execution of the program so the next so the next uh, unit in the arithmetic and the logical uh, unit uh, it is the arithmetic and the logical unit so this arithmetic and the logical unit it is the uh, center where all the operations are said to be uh, performed the particular operations are executed in the alu of the processor as we have seen so this particular cpu contains the alu and it contains the control unit so what is this alu try to do this this alu is trying to uh, it is uh, trying to implement all the necessary logical and arithmetic operations uh, and this control unit uh, uh, it tries to issue the necessary control signals like read signal write signal and other synchronizing signals uh, in order to control and coordinate the other activities so next the control unit so as uh, specified the control unit it is the nerve center um, uh, that sends the control signals to the other units it is going to uh, control and coordinate the activities of the uh, computer during the execution of the programs so these are the details of the different functional units what we have seen until now so next to uh, proceed with we are having uh, next we have to study the basic uh, operational concept so this basic operational concepts uh, what we have to study in the basic operational concepts so basic operational concepts we have to understand the mm, uh, typical has to undergo in order to uh, get executed so that can be understood uh, with the help of the following figure so this uh, figure tries to uh, illustrate the connection between the processor and the main memory so this uh, this is the memory and uh, we are having uh, this is the entire thing is called as the processor so in this particular processor we are having the uh, different type of registers here uh, apart from the n number of general purpose registers so these are called as the n number of general uh, general purpose registers which are used to hold the data okay during the uh, execution intermediate data or, or the operands will be stored the resultant of an operands will be stored here and we are having as we already know the operation of the control unit and the alu unit so now we shall concentrate on this particular um, registers and special uh, these are called as the n general purpose registers so it uh, depends upon the computer architecture there can be 16 registers 32 depending upon the tyrant uh, uh, important registers called as the instruction register ir it is having um, so these are the registers that are there within the processor so these um, are the important uh, registers first one is the instruction register so second one is the program counter uh, general purpose register memory address register and memory data register so instruction register so what is the purpose of this instruction register it holds instruction register holds the instruction that uh, needs to be executed by the processor uh, so next is the program counter so this register is primarily it is responsible for holding the address of the next instruction to be executed a program counter contains the address address of the next instruction to be executed in the program so next the general purpose registers as i have told so there can be uh, 0 to n minus 1 uh, general purpose registers that is like 16 registers uh, registers is the mar and mdr so these two registers 
it uh, sets the communication between the processor and the memory. So, these are the important registers which helps in the communication between the processor and that of the uh, main uh, between the processor and the memory. Right. So, this particular what is the role of the memory address register? Memory address register it holds the address of the memory location that is to be accessed address of the memory location uh, where uh, the data has to be stored or it has to be read. So, that address information is stored in the MAR and what uh, memory data register. So, this contains the data that is uh, that is to be stored uh, into the memory or uh, it has to be read from the memory. So, basically the address information is stored in the MAR and uh, the data information, the data is basically stored in the MDR, memory address register and the memory data register. So, after understanding the different types of register, so now we shall try to understand the typical execution of a instruction. It has been identified either by an address or a symbolic name. So, this is called as a symbolic name. So, the na uh, address of uh, the memory location is one of the operand. So, imagine some value 10 is being stored here in the memory location. So, that uh, that is one of the operand. So, add the operand at the memory location LOA to the, op uh, to the operand in the register or not. So, uh, where is another second operand? Second operand is our R0. R0 is our second operand. So, what is R0? It is the processor register. Processor register, second operand is in the processor register. So, what happens here? The original contents of location A are preserved. The contents of R0 is said to be overwritten. So, first we are going to add the contents of location A to R0. Uh, so, place the sum, ok. So, the this is the R0. So, what we are going to do in the R0, R0, we are going to add the contents of location A plus whatever was there in previously and store the resultant back in R0. So, this is the meaning of the instruction. So, this particular instruction, now we have to understand at the machine level how the instruction processing is going to happen uh, with the help of uh, the MAR and the MDR registers. So, this can be better understood with the help of the following block diagram. So, this particular block diagram shows the clear picture of how the typical steps needed to execute the instruction. So, this first what happens, the entire program is being stored up in a memory. So, if this is the program, if this is the program, this is the address of the first instruction. So, this uh, address of the first instruction, so this imagine the address of this instruction is 1000. So, that will be loaded into the program counter. So, PC program counter is nothing but our PC register. It will be loaded address of the first instruction is loaded into the program counter. The value of program counter is then transmitted, it is then transferred to the memory address register. So, when once it is trans, trans, um, uh, transferred into the memory address register, as I have said, this program counter holds the address of the first instruction to be executed. That address of that uh, instruction will be loaded into the MAR, memory address register. The content, the, uh, the address is being sent to the memory via the uh, bus, via the system bus. Then, um, Simultaneously, the control unit, what it tries to do, it will try to issue a read signal. Uh, it will generate a read signal and it will try to issue that read signal via the control bus uh, to the memory. So, after some time, what happens? The main memory, upon the receival of the read signal and the address information from the specified address, uh, from the specified memory location, the uh, uh, instruction, okay, for example, the add instruction will be stored here. So, this instruction will be loaded into the MDR. 
Okay, what is MDR? MDR is the memory data register. So, whatever the uh, instruction is there, that is now fetched into the MDR. So, the instruction now that is there in the MDR will be uh, got into the instruction register. So, instruction register is now holding the instruction to be executed. So, the control unit will be, uh, it will try to analyze or decode the information the op uh, operation of the instruction and then it will try to issue the necessary signals to the ALU. So this is our arithmetic logic unit which tries to implement the pro uh, which tries to implement the operation required operation. Okay, so if the operation after fetching the instruction uh, from the instruction register uh, and uh, after decoding the operation requires the operand. So operand fetch. After the instruction fetch, the next phase is the operand fetch. So well, now again the cycle repeats. So the address, the address of that particular operands where it is there, it will be the address information will be loaded into the MAR and it will be sent to the memory. The operands which are fetched, it will be loaded. Um, into the MDR. Okay, when the address uh, where the operand is to be fetched, the control signal will generate the read signal. The required operands will be uh, loaded into the MDR and similarly, now what happens, the operands that are there here, it will try to get that required operands into the registers, into the registers and from there it will be transferred into the area. So this is our operand fetch. So this is what the read cycle and similarly the uh, uh, write cycle. What is the write? What happens during the write? So during the write what happens? The result, uh, resultant it, it is being stored up. The result of an instruction it is there within the ALU. From the ALU uh, the register it will be trans it will be from the registers of the um, of our processor. Okay, from the ALU the resultant will be stored in the registers. From the registers it will be uh, loaded into the MDR and appropriate address information where it has to be stored in the memory so that information is being stored and instead of the read signal now the control unit will uh, try to issue a write signal and this forms the complete uh, cycle of uh, execution right so now whatever we have explained in the in the form of a figure can be uh, now written in the form of a steps so these are the typical steps needed to execute the instruction. So first the programs reside in the main memory through the input device. So first step what happens the PC is set to the first instruction. The contents of the PC are transferred to the MAR. Okay. So the contents of the PC are transferred to the MAR called as the memory address register and a read signal is sent to the memory. Okay. So then the first instruction is read out of the memory and it is being loaded into the MAR. The contents of the MAR are transferred to the instruction register. The instruction is said to be decoded by the uh, control unit. So decoded and the uh, so decoded and the instruction and execute the instruction. In order to execute the instructions, we need the operand. So next phase after the uh, instruction is being fetched, so we are going for the operand fetch. So next get the operands for the ALU. So where we are going to get here general purpose register and the operands can be either the general purpose register or the memory location. So the memory, okay, what happens here? So memory address to MAR read and MAR, MDR to the ALU. So the operands are fetched from the MDR that is the memory data register to the uh, ALU and then the required operation is performed in the ALU, right? So then the result is stored back. So this is what, this is the read cycle and this is the write cycle. So to uh, general purpose register to the memory the result 
the address information is loaded here to which location the data has to be written and what data has to be written. So MAR contains the address of the memory location where the data has to be written and MDR holds the resultant data. This is the address. So and this is the result of the operation and then what happens a write signal is being issued and then what happens and now PC after now read cycle is over and write cycle is over and then what happens our PC has to PC is nothing but the program counter so now program counter has to be incremented to point to the next location. So this completes the uh, typical operation steps of a uh, instruction. So in the um, uh, exam, so this particular one question, so usually they'll ask list the steps needed to execute the uh, machine instruction. So this is, uh, so these are the steps what you have to re uh, write. So this com carries eight marks question. So the instruction will be given load R2, LOC. So you have to uh, mention the instruction will be given. So now you have to write the steps in terms of the MAR, MDR, how the data is being fetched. And these steps illustrate the complete solution for the given problem. Okay, so first transfer the contents of register PC to the MAR, uh, issue a read command to the memory and then uh, wait until it has transferred the requested uh, word into the MDR and then transfer the instruction from the MDR into the IR and decode it. So this is the instruction fetch phase followed by the operand fetch. So if the operands are uh, like uh, for example, if the operands are readily available within the memory, uh, within the processor, so we need not fetch the operands from the memory. For example, in this instruction, add R2, R1. So R2 and R1 are readily available within the processor. So no need to fetch the operands in this particular case because it is readily available within the processor. It is available within the, the operands are available within the general purpose registers of the processor. So therefore, the instruction execution takes place immediately without the need for uh, operand fetch. Okay. So in case if the particular instruction, if the operand is a memory location, so then we have to find, then we have to fetch the required operand. Right. So then issue a read command and wait until the MDR is loaded. So transfer the contents of MDR to the uh, ALU, transfer the contents of R0 to ALU and then perform the addition uh, of the two operands in the ALU and transfer the result into the R0. Okay. So transfer the contents of PC to ALU, add one to the operand in the ALU and transfer the increment result to the PC. Right, so this is what the complete solution, and this is the load R not comma R two. This is not R two. This is load R not comma L O C. Okay, so the operand is um, one of the operand is registered, and another uh, operand is the L O C. So now we have completed the basic operational steps uh, required for. Uh, executing a in, given instruction. So for more examples you can try to refer the notes, e-content notes. Right. So the next topic what we shall uh, move on is the bus. Right. So what is this particular bus? Uh, there is a, every need for one functional unit to communicate with the other uh, functional unit and when the information is being transmitted uh, from one unit to from one functional unit to another, a group of uh, bits have to be transmitted parallelly. So this can be accomplished by co connecting uh, all the devices using a group of wires and that uh, is called as the bus. So the functional units are interconnected using a group of lines called as the bus. So the, they can be a single bus or a 
multi multiple bus organization so two forms of buses we can see so that is either the system can hold a single bus structure or a multiple bus structure so the single bus uh, bus serves as a connecting path for several uh, devices so the the in order to have a clear distinction between the different types of data uh, different types of information that can be trans transferred over the bus or the group of lines there can be three forms of uh, uh, buses here the address bus the data bus and the control bus so this is the figure which um, illustrates how the different functional units have been interconnected so that is this is the input uh, input unit output unit memory and the processor are all interconnected via the system bus okay so all these can communicate over the system bus so as a clear distinction uh, here with the bus to uh, see the different forms of uh, uh, information is been depending upon the need a different form uh, forms of uh, information is uh, exchanged between the different functional units here. We are having the control lines, address lines and the data lines. So the address lines uh, uh, contains the uh, information, only the data that has to be transmitted either between the from the I.O. device to the memory, from the I.O. device to the processor or between any two functional blocks the data can be exchanged via can be sent via the data lines okay so similarly the control information uh, that is the control signals uh, which are generated by the control unit uh, can, is used uh, basically this is used by the processor to access uh, the IO devices which are connected to it to read or write from the device so that control signals are sent via the control lines okay so this particular address lines the address of the particular device which is connected to the processor or address of a memory location uh, okay. It is being sent via this, that address information is being sent via the address lines. So this is, uh, the, uh, this is the way how the different uh, functional units have been interconnected via the bus. Okay, so as uh, specified, there are two uh, forms of either can be a single bus or a multiple bus. The advantage of the single bus is that the single bus is... Uh, um, flex, it is uh, cheaper. Uh, it is uh, cheaper, and it is said to be low cost for implementation. And uh, the uh, disadvantage is that uh, only uh, communication takes place between two functional blocks. Okay, so the, coming to the multiple uh, bus organization, it is costlier to implement, and uh, uh, this particular. Uh, uh, this uh, particular uh, multiple bus organization, we can transmit more amount of more uh, data uh, using this particular parallel lines. And also added, uh, this particular uh, single bus, it is said to be, we can attach more peripheral devices. Okay, so this is all about the bus structure. So next, moving forward to the concept of performance why we have to understand what is the metric or uh, how to evaluate the system how how to judge which system is better or which system is not better so now we have to study uh, the performance concept so this the most important measure how do we measure a computer which computer is performing better okay so this uh, performance it is an important factor to evaluate the uh, computer so this, uh, it is going to, uh, the most important measure of a computer is how quickly it can execute the programs. So the total time of execution or the time, the uh, total time of execution is nothing but the time elapsed between the start and end of the program, right. So three factors affect the performance of the system. So basically, what are those three factors? Hardware design, the instruction set, and the compiler. So the hardware design, hardware design, how how the uh, underlying hardware is being uh, used, how the processor is being designed, 
Okay, so that is called as the hardware design. What type of technology we are trying to use here? So that is called as the hardware design. So instruction set, what type of instruction set? Basically, um, the category of uh, instruction like whether uh, risk uh, instruction set architecture or CISC instruction, so that adds to the performance of the system. What type of instruction set we are trying to use, right? And the compiler. The uh, form of the compiler we are using, are we using any parallelizing uh, compilers or what form of uh, compiler, whether it is uh, optimal optimizer, uh, all has to be uh, considered. And the important thing here is that this, um, when designing, when evaluating, uh, when designing a computer system, the three concepts uh, have to be uh, kept in mind, the three important factors have to be kept in mind and the system has to be designed in line with the three factors that is the hardware design, the instruction set and the compiler and the type of compiler we are using. So as I have said, um, what type of uh, compilers we are trying to use. So that matters to the performance of the system. So next we are having uh, the performance, the cache uh, cache memory being introduced. So this is the cache memory what you can see uh, it, ca it is used. So this particular cache memory why we have introduced the cache memory within the processor. So to understand that first we need to know that a processor time to execute a program depends upon the hardware involved in the execution of the individual instructions, right? So what do we mean by we have introduced the cache here? Cache is nothing but during the execution of the program, we know that the entire program has to be loaded into the main memory. It has to be loaded into the main memory. It has to be the programs, the data has to be loaded into the main memory and the data is, and the instructions are fetched one by one into the uh, pro, uh, registers of the processor. Right. So when the data is, so when the processor starts executing the instruction, the data will be fetched from the main memory. Because it is time consuming, if that, uh, if that instruction needs to be again and again referenced, so the processor will be, uh, the processor time will be wasted in accessing the main memory. So instead of that, whatever the main memory, whatever the processor tries to access, uh, the instructions, a copy of it, if it is maintained in a memory called as a cache memory, the time required to access the main memory will be reduced and therefore the uh, programs can be executed in a faster way, in a better way and that is the reason why we introduce the cache here. Right? So therefore the processor cache is um, having the ability to improve the performance of the system. Right. So, if the processor is present within the cache, it, uh, if the sorry, if the cache is present uh, um, within the processor, it is called as the L1 cache. Okay, level one cache. So, this is the processor cache with the introduction of the cache memories. The performance of the system can be improved efficiently, and that is the hardware modification what we are going to do. Okay. So, the next. Uh, we are having the processor and a relatively small cache memory can be fabricated on a single integrated chip and uh, we, uh, which should be uh, which should uh, be speed which should be uh, speeder enough and uh, it should be cost efficient and be should be able to um, should be able for uh, to contribute to memory management effectively okay so next we are having the processor clock so what is this processor clock and what, what does this deal with the performance of the uh, system? So uh, this particular clock, clock is nothing but the clock, clock cycle and the clock rate R is equal to 1 by P. So now what happens, what is this particular, uh, first of all what is the CPU clock? The timing, uh, the execution of every uh, instruction is being controlled and coordinated by what we call it as a CPU clock, right? Okay, the uh, fixed uh, amount of intervals, the uh, time interval, the 
that is being decided by the clock period. So, this is called as a processor clock, clock cycle P. The length of interval, so that is called as the clock cycle and the clock rate. Clock rate is nothing but 1 by P. It is 1 by um, clock period, clock cycle that is called as the rate. So, the execution of each instruction is divided into several basic steps, each of which completes in one clock cycle. Okay, so usually it is measured in uh, cycles per second. Right, so this particular, okay, so now this is uh, uh, another uh, performance, basic performance equation. So this basic performance equation, it is um, thing which is used, this formula, what we call it as a T is equal to N into S by R. So, this N into S by R. So, this is what it is this particular equation. We call it as a basic performance equation. So, what is this basic performance? What does this, uh, what are the parameters that are specified in the basic performance equation? So, T is nothing but the processor time required to execute an instruction. So, what is this T? T is the total time required to execute a program. And what is this N? N is the actual number of machine instructions. N is the actual number of machine language instructions. And yes, okay. So, uh, for example, if our program contains some 100 instructions, so capital N will be equal to 100. That is the number of instructions needed to execute the program. So, that is called as the, um, that is the, what we call it as the N. And what is yes, average number of basic steps needed to execute one machine instruction. So, what is this now, uh, uh, as I have told, if our program contains some 100 instructions, so N is equal to 100, right? And what is S? S is nothing but to execute the single instruction, how many basic steps? We know that a few instructions can be executed in two, uh, two cycles or two steps, certain other instructions, four, eight, like that. So, how many yes determines the number of basic steps required to uh, execute one machine instruction. And uh, each step is said to be completed in one uh, unit, in one clock cycle, okay. So, therefore, R is the clock rate. So, this is N into S by R. It is called as the performance equation. So, this performance equation, as you can see, in order to achieve a good performance, so what we have to do, this particular thing. So, uh, which parameter should be increased and which parameter should be decreased. So, in order to achieve a better performance, we have to see that the N and S values are said to be reduced and the R value is said to be increased in order to achieve a better performance. I repeat, N and S should be uh, decreased and R should be increased. So, how do we increase or decrease uh, this particular to improve the particular uh, thing? Okay, so how do we increase or decrease N? So N is nothing but the machine, number of actual machine language instructions needed to complete the execution. So we have to decrease this particular N. So uh, that, that is, um, we have to reduce the number of actual machine instructions required to execute the uh, program. So that is called as the, that is optimizing the program. And also reduce the number of uh, basic steps needed to execute the program. And this one we can try to increase by trying to uh, increase the clock rate. So we can try to increase the uh, parameter, the R value. Okay. So this is what the performance, how we can try to increase. So next is the clock rate. How do we increase the clock rate? Clock rate is nothing but R. So now, uh, how do we increase this R? So this R can be increased effectively by the two uh, base here. 
one is that improving the IC technology to make the circuits faster. So this can be in, uh, to, in, to increase the clock rate. So this IC technology can be, ICs can be made, um, the circuits can be faster, advanced. Uh, this thing IC technology, improvement in IC technology can bring the uh, circuits, can make the circuits faster. So next, reduce the amount of processing done in one basic step. Um, okay, so this is the second way how to deal. So increase in R that are entirely caused by the improvement in IC technology affects all aspects of the processor operation equally, right? So this is the way how to achieve a better performance by improving P and F, by uh, reducing uh, this N and S value and increasing the R value, right? Okay. So next we are having another uh, concept that is associated with the performance called as the performance measurement, okay? So now uh, because uh, uh, there is a standard uh, this particular, um, how do we evaluate the performance of a uh, system? So there are a variety of programs being run uh, in order to decide whether it is a good performing computer or a uh, average performing computer. So therefore, a set of standard programs was designed and uh, standardized by a organization called as a Systems uh, Performance Evaluation Corporation called as a SPEC which selects and publishes the standard set of application programs called as the benchmark programs which were belonging to different domains. Okay. So that particular uh, in one site, okay, so what do you mean by site? Uh, uh, set of uh, related programs together contribute to a site. So uh, this particular uh, uh, benchmark programs was used to evaluate the performance of the computer. So this spec rating, so how do we, uh, we can evaluate the performance using what we call as the, uh, by using the spec rating, or where specs stands for System Performance Evaluation Corporation, right. So how do we, depending upon the spec factor, we are going to decide this is the running time on the reference computer divided by, by the running time on the computer under test. So this is nothing but, uh, this is the, uh, so n is the number of uh, program in the site. So this is called as the, what we call, uh, uh, this is the way how to evaluate the system. So next is the spec rating. How do, uh, this, this is called as a spec rating and we can take a geometric mean of the spec rating or uh, depending upon the different values, we can just uh, uh, take a geometric uh, mean of that, which uh, of all the um, uh, performance uh, evaluated and uh, depending upon the uh, performance ratings, we can try to take the ge geometric mean of the spec rating which is given by this particular formula. Okay, so this is called as a spec rating, spec rating. Uh, to summarize all the concepts, we have uh, completed the uh, first we have discussed about the different types of uh, uh, different uh, the functional units of the computer the then we have uh, studied about the uh, different first we have discussed about the functional units the basic operational concepts the bus structure the performance uh, how the performance can be uh, defined in terms of uh, processor clock, basic performance equation, how we can reduce the clock rate and uh, the performance measurement. So the second part of the module uh, 3, it basically deals with how the machine instruct, with the specification of the machine instructions and the programs. So this particular uh, machine instructions and the programs under this topic we need to study about the memory location and the addresses, uh, how the memory is being organized, what are the operations we can perform on the memory, uh, what uh, are the different types of uh, uh, ways how the memory can be uh, addressed. Okay, and uh, the instructions and the instruction sequencing and the different forms of addressing uh, modes. Okay, so this particular, uh, now moving on to the second part of the module. Uh,
3. So module 3 basically we will uh, be discussing in the second part about the instructions and the different forms of instructions and uh, the memory and the memory operations all related to memory and the memory operations and the addressing modes. Okay. So basically to start with uh, we are having the machine instructions and the programs. So we are having the memory location and addresses. So these are the different types of uh, uh, machine instructions. So under this machine instructions and uh, program, sorry, we are required to study the memory location and addresses, memory operations, instruction sequencing and instruction uh, straight line execution. So next uh, session we shall try to begin with the machine instructions and machine uh, and addressing 